So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to start by grabbing all of the necessary, um, grabbing all of the necessary building blocks for me to be able to build this thing out. So I have a list of what I consider the must-have add-ons. I'm actually going to pull up my screen here real quick. Uh, these are what I consider, at least for the setup that I'm going to do today, this is what I would consider the must-have add-ons. In fact, there might be some extra ones in there. I'm not sure. No, it looks like I, I managed to distill it down to just the ones that are going to affect how things appear on the screen. This isn't everything by any means. This isn't... Uh, this I'm not going to go through and like obviously I'm gonna want a bag mod. Uh, I'm gonna end up putting like auctionator in there. Uh, you know, little extra things like Death Note is one that I don't have on the list, but I consider it a must-have for rating. It's something that's super important. This is just the stuff that I'm gonna use to make the layout, the general shell that then I can wrap everything else into. Add-ons like bagins for my bag mod, auctionator for my auction uh, add-on. Those sort of things aren't very visual. Um, or when they are visual, it's in a very specific uh, situation. It's very um, uh, compartmentalized in that sense. So I'm not so worried about building, like I'm not so worried about having Auctionator installed when I'm building out my user interface and building out how everything is going to look. I'm not so worried about that so much. So let's jump back over here real quick. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start, I'm just going to go down the list here real quick. Uh, Add-on control panel. This is an amazing add-on that everybody should honestly have. And it's one that I have uh, and I've had installed in the past that I tend to kind of forget that I have installed. Uh, but it's, it's super important. It lets you turn on and turn off add-ons without having to relog. It's extremely helpful when you're setting up a UI because it will allow you to switch off add-ons that you're not ready to mess with just yet and instead work on keeping, like, okay, I'm going to set up grid right now. I'm going to set up my mini-map right now. I don't need bars all over the place. I don't need DBM running at this particular point in time. It's really, really useful for setting that up. AZ cast bar uh, is the cast bar add-on that I'm going to be using. Uh, it's just one that I really, really like. It's very lightweight, a uh, lot lighter weight than something like quartz, for example. So that's why I like it. I, I generally like I generally like add-ons to fall in... Okay, let's come back over here for a second. I generally like add-ons to fall into one of two camps. Either it's a whole bunch of things at once that I'm going to use the vast majority of them, or it's just one thing and that's all it does. I like those to be one or, one or two things. Uh, in a case of something like Auctioneer is a good example here. It doesn't really fit into the, the style of add-on I'm using here, but the reason I don't use Auctioneer is because it has a whole bunch of extra tools that I just don't have any interest in. I'm not somebody who's really trying to play the auction house to an extreme degree, so I'm not worried about Auctioneer. I prefer Auctionator because it's really focused on just throw your crap up there and it'll probably sell. That's it's minor minor interface improvements to the auction house instead of overall like super like stock market-esque tools to be able to manage everything. So that's why I generally prefer uh, add-ons uh, to... If it, I don't like add-ons with a whole bunch of bloat, basically, is what I'm getting at. So with something like Quartz, Quartz has all these extra like buff bars and all this extra stuff involved with Quartz. And if you're using all that stuff, cool. But if not, there's no reason to have all of that in there. It just ends up eating up a whole bunch of your, uh, your system memory, uh, eating up CPU cycles, etc. on stuff that you're just not using. So that's, that's one thing to keep in mind as I go through the list here. Uh, so, add-on control panel, AZ cast bar. Uh, Chinchilla is my minimap add-on. I'll go ahead and make a note there. Minimap add-on. Uh, there's lots of different minimap add-ons. There's not a huge difference between most of them. Uh, a lot of people like something like Sexy Map. A lot of people will... There's just all sorts of different minimap add-ons. Chinchilla is just the one that I've used for a long period of time. It's what I'm most familiar with. So that's what I'm going to use when I set this up. Uh, chocolate bar is like foo bar. It's like a uh, Titan panel. I just generally like how how chocolate bar is set up. I, I feel like most add-ons should have at least one sort of what we call a broker add-on. It's something that can display broker uh, broker broker plugins. And just say a handful of the the individual ones that I'm going to install. I'm just going to grab these for the sake of setting them up on the stream. But U clock is a clock add-on I use for it. Broker currency is nice. Broker repair. Those are nice to have. They're just little widgets or whatever that will display some information on your screen. Very useful. DBM, as obvio, you need some sort of rating add-on if you want to raid. I prefer DBM. Uh, if you use something else like uh, Big Wigs, for example, that's fine too. DBM is just the one that I prefer. Uh, bar add-on I'll be using is Domino's. 
pretty much entirely because I like the name. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much all it comes down to. I like the name Domino's. Uh, I actually used Bartender for quite a while. Um, and at one point I was having a problem with something. There was something weird going on with my add-ons. So I, I thought it was Bartender. It wasn't. But in the process, I switched over to Domino's and just didn't mess with it. Uh, a couple little plugins I'll be grabbing for that. Omni CC uh, allows the little, uh, like, it, it gives you ways to adjust the way that the timers count down on your bars themselves. And Tola Range is something that will allow me to make the different icons change color entirely when I'm actually uh, out of range or out of mana and so on. Uh, Elcano's Buff Bars. Uh, I, I just like Elcano's Buff Bars. It's pretty configurable. Uh, and I've, I've generally found a good way to set that up. I, I found a nice way to set up Elcano's Buff Bars that I really like. So that's what I'll be going with. Um, grid. Uh, again, this is going to be kind of a recurring theme with what I'm saying here. I know a lot of people like Voodoo. Uh, I like Grid just because it's what I know. It's something that I'm very familiar with. Uh, in terms of setting up a user interface. Uh, remember, part of what I was talking about earlier is a, a huge part of why I like to set up a custom UI is so that I can have everything customized to me. And when I know how to customize an add-on, when it's just one that I've spent a whole lot of time with and it's still working fine, then that's what I'm going to stick with. I'm going to go with Grid. I have a couple of different add-ons uh, or plugins for Grid also. Grid mana bars I like just to be able to see at a glance. Are my healers out of mana? Uh, do I need to worry about popping extra cooldowns and so on? And grid status rate icons is really nice. Um, it'll put like the little Lucky Charms sort of things on on grid itself, uh, which is nice if you have a boss mod that's using those for like important debuffs and so on. Uh, Mapster is a thing that I like. Uh, it's just a generally... This probably honestly falls under the extra add-ons that you don't really need. Uh, or... That, that don't necessarily go directly into the look and feel of your user interface. It's just something I like. It makes the map a little bit a little bit cleaner, a little bit more um, a little bit more modern, more 2012 map design. So I like that a little bit. Omen, I went back and forth on whether or not I was going to actually install Omen this time around, but I do feel like it does still... You can probably get away without it nowadays, but I feel like in a rating scenario, there's still a lot of benefit to knowing who's second and third on threat and by how much. I feel like there's there's been a lot of situations in the past. Um, Warmaster Blackhorn is a good example. Uh, there's been situations where we were on Warmaster and we could see that the rogue was second on threat. So I would actually pop Divine Shield, he would pop Evasion, and that would just give us a few seconds of nobody taking any damage at all. So I do feel like there's still good reasons to have Omen involved. I'm not going to make it a main feature of the UI, uh, but I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Uh, Parrot is the uh, uh, combat text add-on that I use. Um, again, there's, there's no real major difference, I don't think, between Parrot and MSBT. I just like the way that Parrot's configuration screen works, so that's, that's what I use. I'm a little bit more familiar with it. Uh, I'll be using Pitbull for the um, uh, unit frames. Uh, for my, my unit frames in particular, uh, you know, target frame, focus frame, and so on. Uh, I know that there's lots of different different types of those out there available nowadays. Uh, I like the customization of Pitbull. I like to be able to get in there and just really tinker with it and make it look how I want it to look. So that's what I'll be using to set this up. It's kind of a pain to set up, but in my opinion, it's worth it. Power Auras is one of the more mandatory add-ons that I have. A lot of what I end up doing when I set this stuff up is I will I will I will plan things around making a power aura for something important. So like for example, um, Inquisition on my Retribution Paladin, uh, I have just a little timer that pops up for power aura. Uh, excuse me, in power auras, I just have a little timer that pops up so that I can keep track of Inquisition. That's it. Something like an important proc that I need to watch uh, that doesn't already have the built-in you know like graphics that that Blizzard has or anything. Something like an important debuff on a particular fight. Those are all things that I like to build into power auras. So that um, the the big reason that I like power auras so much is because it's the way it's customizable. You can have information that's visible to you when it's important, and then it takes up no screen space whatsoever when it's no longer important. Or you can have it presented in a way that's very very minimalist, uh, that still allows you to have it on your screen in a, in an easily accessible format. I like to try and keep from cluttering up my screen too much with extra stuff. I do end up putting a whole lot of stuff on my screen, but I try to keep it to a minimum just because. Uh, Again, I just I don't like having all sorts of clutter on my screen. 
Uh, Pratt is kind of leaning on the edge of the where I would consider it acceptable to have a very large bloated add-on. Um, it does several things that I use it for. It does several things that I don't. Fortunately, Pratt, you're able to disable a lot of those extra stuff that you don't really need. I, I really wouldn't like it even to be... Like, in a perfect world, it wouldn't be there to begin with. But I really haven't found a better way to... A better add-on to set up my, my chat stuff and handle a couple of other little things that I'm going to have it do. That I'll show you guys once we get into actually uh, customizing things. Uh, SCADA is the damage timer that I use. Uh, and SCADA window buttons is just a nice little plug-in for SCADA that I like that... Uh, saves me from having to do a whole lot of the right click, left click, moving back and forth in different menus. Uh, it makes it work a little bit more like recount, so I like that a bunch. Uh, Skinner is an add-on that does a ton of stuff that I use almost everything that it, it does. Um, I use that for my viewport. I use that for prettying up, uh, prettying, prettying up my user interface. You'll see me use that quite a bit and tinker with that for a bunch when I'm actually setting the thing up too. Uh, tidy plates. Again, I just really like it. Uh, it's a nice little nameplate add-on. Looks really good. Uh, and then tip tack is what I'll be using for my tool tips. Uh, so I've got Curse Client over here, and let's go ahead and start downloading these things. All right. Now, gaze upon the giant mess that is now my user interface. That is a mess. Okay. What I like to do at this point is sort of sketch out how I want my interface to actually look. You can do this by popping open uh, MS Paint and pulling in a screenshot, but do the magic of, through the magic of XSplit, I'm able to just go ahead and draw right on my screen. So that's what I'm going to do here. Go ahead and pull this up as big as I can get it. All right. So what I'm doing now is just trying to get a sense of where on my screen I want everything to sit. Just to, just to get a feel for how the interface is going to look without going through all the trouble of uh, actually setting everything up and then, then deciding that I hate it afterwards. So I'm going to start by putting out, um, uh, putting out stuff on the screen for the, uh, the most important stuff to me visually. The stuff that I know I'm going to be able to, I'm, I'm going to need to see right away. So let's start with grid. Um, before I had grid up over in uh, in this corner up over here, and that was a mess. I didn't really like that at all. It was way up out of the way. So what I'd like to do is put grid right about here. Maybe not quite so big. Uh, maybe something a bit more like this. I'll put grid right about there. That way it's nice and in the center of my screen right where I can see it. Um, and it should be... Sure, we'll call that grid. Oh, let's see, minimap. I'm actually going to put my minimap up about here, I think. And it's going to jump into the screen a little bit, uh, but it won't be too bad. I'll have a panel that goes along the top like so, and a panel that goes along the bottom through chocolate bar. Um, and then I'm going to plan on having... Uh, I'll have my viewport come up to about here. So grid will poke up a little bit, but not a ton. And then I'll be able to put things like SCADA over here, OMEN, uh, and then I'll have action bars over here, uh, and then I'll have my chat over here. So it'll end up being kind of similar to how I had it before, just with those couple of major, excuse me, major changes in the layout. Putting the minimap up in the center, putting grid down in the center, um, and then I'll use the... Uh, uh, viewport option in Skinner to shrink down the display so I'm not covering up a ton of my screen uh, which I'll show you I'll show you guys that when I get to it for sure um, let's see I'm gonna put a I like having my uh, that's probably a little bigger than it's gonna need to be I don't actually have an erase function right now but I like having things like this that'll be my target of target right there um, my unit frame target unit frame uh, Probably like pet there, pet target. I don't know. We'll figure out those when we, when we get to them. But right now, I feel like this is probably probably decent. This seems like a good a good start getting all of this set up like so. So let's start by messing with grid. Um, 
we'll get grid I want to get grid set up in this bottom area here because remember I'm going to be building everything kind of around grid so I wanted to I want to get it down in the plate or down into place there so what I'm going to do just to block it off is I'm going to create a uh, middle frame there we go a middle frame in uh, Skinner and make it about the size I want grid to be that's so, okay apparently not worried about grid right now let's get the mini map up um, it's kind of weird it's like auto changing I just kind of want a circular mini map there, now I have a really boring mini-map right in the center of my screen. I may end up coming back to this and experimenting with it a little bit more. Alright, let us continue. Let's, um, let's actually go ahead and head into Skinner. And we will start getting the viewport set up. Okay. So let me take one second real quick to explain how viewports work in this game. Let's go ahead and expand it back out so it's at the full screen again. Whoops, wrong way. All right. So we now have our full screen showing everything. I'm gonna position the, uh, let's do something on the other side. All right, we'll do it like this. See the horde banner? and subrandom and the the balloon over here on the left side of the screen this is a really good way to illustrate why shrinking down your screen to cut out extra stuff actually gives you more viewable distance more viewable range what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna start cutting up from the bottom of the screen now watch what happens on the left side over here now I can actually see more see it's actually expanding and showing me more of the world in fact, if I were to shrink down the viewport super long, look how much I can actually see horizontally now. Now, I can still see the same exact amount vertically. Let me shrink it back down. Uh, we'll find, uh, okay, see, uh, let's find something on the that I can put at the bottom side of the screen to be able to see easily. All right, these bushes down here. As I shrink it from the bottom, those bushes stay in the same exact spot which basically basically means the way that a viewport actually works is it stretches things to the side and shrinks everything it doesn't cut things off from the bottom or top it stretches things to the side so that's why when you have like if you have a user interface where you have a whole bunch of stuff along the bottom side like I'm planning on eventually doing here I'm gonna have a whole bunch of stuff along the, on, along the bottom here uh, it's good to have a viewport set up to actually cut off that area because you're not well you're not cutting anything off at all you're actually expanding your viewable area uh, and and making sure that nothing gets hidden behind the crap uh, that sits in front of your screen so I'm gonna have grid popping up just a little bit uh, but I feel like that's probably about a, let's go for a nice nice round number we'll do one oops 160 at the bottom and just because I have a little bit at the top there that's covered up by chocolate bar, we'll shrink that down a little bit too. So now I have this big blank area down there. Now I want that to look good. So I'm gonna come in here to the bottom frame setting uh, and actually just adjust this real quick. Okay, so I now have the general layout set up. So let's start, let's start putting things in place. Um, slide some of this stuff off to the side where should I set all of this stuff up hmm well let's start by getting the chat down in place I'm gonna put my main chat here so let me let me show how I have the chat set up here real quick just to explain everything I have two windows uh, basically just you go in and you do uh, create new window you can name it whatever you want donkey balls for example and you can right click on it and go into settings and you can change these settings you can change what actually shows up in it it's built into World of Warcraft um, doesn't actually have anything to do with any sort of add-ons that I have installed that's just something basic so uh, like I have my combat log here I have a separate one that I've got set up for officer 
So everyone over here is set up for whispers that I get and so on. I then went in and went into the background and made sure that it was transparent so that it fits fine over here. That's how I have my chat set up. And now I can go in here and lock the windows. So let's set this up. I'm going to scale these down a little bit. Whoops, that's not the one I wanted. Um, scale, there we go. Scale these down to about where I'm comfortable. It's a little bit smaller than I'd like. Let's go about like this. Let's see if I can slide this down here. I do have a bar at the bottom. I want to put something down there so I can see how tall it is. Uh, which means I'm going to need to move this up a little bit. In my old setup, I had a bar right around here that I had a whole bunch of stuff in just for the idea of hitting that. Um, that, that was the, the buttons that I had bound to my Naga. What I'd like to do this time around, let's go ahead and pop this back up again, is I'm thinking of putting a, a bar right here and a bar right here. So, and, and then that way I will have those be uh, 1 through 6 and then uh, 7 through 12 on my, not, excuse me, it's like, now it's a G600, but same general idea. So what I want to do on these is I want to make it like that, scale it down, stick it there, and what was the other one? This one, wasn't it? Like so. Scale it down as well. Stick it right there. Bam. Everything fits quite nicely now. That'll work like that. I'll have to adjust my keybinds later, but that'll work for what I need. Alright. Now comes the fun part making Pitbull work. So, for starters, I need to create a layout for just me. So, me. Oops has to be at least three characters long. Player. Okay. Go to units. Player. Layout. Player. And I'm going to start turning stuff off on this layout. So. Right. All right, disable config mode. That's what I'm left with. So now I make it not look so terrible. There, that should be good. All right, now we come back over here to normal. And I'm gonna need to end up actually copying a whole bunch of settings because I don't think there's actually a way to just copy settings in the layout editor, unfortunately. So, width. 90. All right, so far that looks pretty good. All right, this is my target of target though, which means I need to add a new layout. Let's call it simple, because what I'm going to do for target of target is turn everything off. So, all right, that's good enough for now. I'm going to lock call it good on the raid frames for the time being. Alright, let's set up let's set up this guy. So here's how I like to set up my buff bars. I like to keep them set up um, in a way that keeps the buffs kind of hidden off to the side. I like to have them visible but not really taking up a whole lot of my screen. Uh, and I like my debuffs to be kind of large and easily visible. So, I'm going to give myself a buff here. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to do about like that for my buffs. 
That is how my buffs will show. Okay. So now my buffs, I can come up over here and turn off configuration mode on both of those. My buffs will just fill down the right side of the screen. Nice, small, out of the way, but I can still see them at a glance if I need them. Debuffs, however, I like to do these a little bit differently. Now when I have a debuff, I get a nice big icon there that shows it in a really, really easy to see uh, fashion. So that is quite nice. What am I forgetting? Ah, easy cast bar. Let's set this up. So, if I go and turn off edit mode, and I cast something, that don't look too bad. Let's see what grid does once I get in here. Grid immediately gets stuck behind everything else. All right. There. I just don't care about the other people in Alt Track Valley. I've decided anybody more than more than 25 people doesn't matter. That that's how I'll fix that problem. Those people just aren't real. All right, I'm I'm defending. So what I could do is let's see what happens if I do this. So if I flatten it down like this, hmm, it's gonna look goofy every time that I'm not in here though. Clearly the only answer is just to never do AV and IOC ever again. Well, what I'm more worried about is if I set it like this, then when I go into a 25 man, then these are just kind of hanging out being goofy looking. I can move this someplace else, but I'd have to move all of these. Which I can do. Maybe I'll try that. Cool, the Alliance won. See, now I've got... We've got me here. And these things are just sort of hanging out. And it just kind of looks weird. Yeah, I might... I might see if Voodoo will work better. But that kind of... That kind of... Uh, I've got a good starting point here at the very least. I've got something working that I can adjust from here. Uh, it's not going to be something that's finished today by any means. It's something that will take some time messing with, tinkering with, just poking around here and there until I have something that I'm that I'm happy with overall um, so yeah I'll have to tinker around a little bit more see what I can do uh, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up though thanks everybody for hanging out at least you got to see how I went through the process of setting everything up uh, and how I just sort of the the sort of uh, thoughts that I was making as I was working my way through it um, again work in progress gonna take some some time with it to really get it down to how I want it to be, but uh, for now I think I've got a decent enough starting point to work from here as I come across the uh, the different glitches and so on in how it's set up. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video uh, and this, this live stream event as well. I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out. I will see you guys later.